I'm Ethan Kwan, and today, uh, welcome to uh, part four of how to make a scrolling platformer tutorial in Scratch thing, a majig thing. Okay. Um, first of all, you might have noticed I made a bit of improvement on my level. It's still pretty bad, but I've made a bit of improvement on my level, as you can see. So I have a few more floating platforms. I have this start little platform thing. Um, yes, and. We have a few more platforms. We have a bit of lava here, so I'm gonna. I want to add a bit of, um, not not living to my game here. So as you can see, I can just walk on the lava, and I'm totally fine. I want to fix that today. Um, so, and also I can fall off the platform. That's not good. Let's add a bit of um, unliving to our um, our game. So okay, or dying, I guess, uh, <laughs> if you, if you prefer. Okay. So, so how do we make the player uh, die? Um, well, there are a few ways to do this. Um, I want to create a way so that I can just add different deaths to this system so I don't have to code that much, I don't have to create a new if condition every time. I just want to be able to add this like color or something to, to this project, say that this is a death color, and it will just automatically do it for me. Uh, that's what I want. So I'm going to create a new variable called state. State. Um, and this is because I want to, for all sprites. So I want to make this because I want to just be able to say, what's the player's state right now? Is it alive? Is it dead? Is it something else? We don't know. So we're going to just create a new variable called state for this exact purpose. Make sure it's for all sprites. And inside the start game loop, we're gonna go ahead and uh, and set state to zero. Actually, no. Instead of setting state to zero, we're gonna just click this and click delete. Meaning we're gonna set this to the empty value. So if anybody says set the set this va variable to the empty value, um, this is what they mean. Okay. So now I'm gonna. How do we how do we make the player die? That sounds very ominous. Um. <laughs> um. Well, remember this repeat until, and I said just leave this repeat until alone. That's much better. Uh, rep <laughs> no, it's not actually. Uh, it's kind of annoying. Um, re remember this repeat. Re remember, remember this repeat until. This repeat until I told you to leave blank because I wanted, it, so it runs forever. Well, I don't want it to run forever anymore. I want it to run uh, only until our game, our 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 player has stopped. Um, or uh, died, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna check if state uh, state is greater than the empty value. Okay, so repeat until state is greater than the empty value. So if we set state to anything other than the empty value, so let's say I um, set state to zero, right? It will reset me. As you can see, so that's great. Um, so yeah, actually, actually, I just realized a problem. Um, before I address that, I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to this problem. So this problem is I can just jump right after I respawn. So if I hold down up, right? If I hold down up and respawn, I can jump, right? So that's a problem. I don't want to be able to jump right now. The easiest way to do this is just to set floating here to 99 at the start of the game. Now I cannot do that. Okay, that's great. That's, <laughs> yes, okay. I, I don't know how I noticed that right now. I just did. Okay, so if we set state to anything other than the empty value, say if I touch lava, I'm going to set state to something else. Say, say death. Oh, not what I want to do. Uh, set state to death. Okay, in all caps, to make it more menacing. So if I set state to death, we will reset. So we want to just set state to death any anytime I die. So I'm gonna well there are a few ways to do this again. Um I'm gonna create a new block to do this. And this new block is gonna be called game or maybe the death, right? Um or trigger death. Right? That's not how you spell trigger. Trigger death. And um quick um uh, nah, just, this is gonna be, let's say we want to animate something, don't click run without screen refresh this time. Okay, click OK. 
Okay, so inside trigger death, what are we going to do? Well, it's pretty easy. All we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and right after that, we're going to go ahead and just set, um, where's my variable? Um, we're just going to go ahead and set state to something, well, let's just say set to, to the empty value so we can animate something. And inside death, let's make it so that um, maybe we like blink or maybe we like shrink. Let's blink. How about that? We blink, like, our, our sprite blinks, and then we restart the game. So I'm going to repeat um, 5, right? Uh, um, we're going to hide. Hide the sprite. Wait one second. And let's say 0 0.2, 0 0.1 second, right? And then we're going to show. And then again, wait 0 0.1 seconds. Okay. So this seems good, but how are we going to call this trigger death message? Because it's not really being called by anything, is it? Um, well, let's just figure that out right now. So inside, let's say we want to make it so that if we fall off the world, right? If we fall out of the world, we want to die. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so we're going to go ahead and... Um, we're going to go ahead and if, uh, inside tick, inside the tick block, if, uh, y is, what's y right now? Uh, y is negative 1304, so, um, maybe like negative 1400, so, um, y, so y is less than negative 1400, because that's the bottom of the level world for me. Uh, then I'm gonna go ahead and trigger death. Actually, first I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, instead of trigger death, I'm just gonna set state to, uh, die. Uh, why not? Okay, so inside play game, right? Inside, sorry, not play game, play. I want to be able to die here, so if state is n something other than the blank value, which is what we're doing here, we're setting the state to die, we should reset immediately. No, we should trigger this um, animation. So we're going to go ahead and set, we're going to just put trigger death right here, so underneath that. So let's see what happens now. If we fall off the edge, yes, so now we die, So and we have this nice blinking animation. And a state gets set reset to zero, as you can see, which is nice. Actually, I kind of want to make it go down a bit farther, so maybe like negative, negative fifteen hundred. Well, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, that's much better. Maybe like sixteen hundred. Sixteen hundred? Maybe that's. Yeah, okay, that's much better. Okay. Okay, so how are we gonna how are we gonna do lava then? Um. Well. Um, this is kind of like an interesting issue, right? Because right now, we just need to set state to something something other than the blank value. So, honestly, I feel like all we have to do is we just have to check if we're touching this color. Um, so actually, I'm going to create a new block for this. I'm going to call it death test. I, I know that that sounds very... Uh, weird, but, um, okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and click run without screen refresh, and inside death test, um, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, s maybe I can stick this y equals negative, uh, less than negative 600 in there, because I'm testing for death right here, right? Um, if we die, we're gonna, we're gonna set state to die, right? So, let's also duplicate this if, get rid of the, this condition, we're gonna go to sensing if touching color, Select the red color, so select this, um, select the lava color, set state to die. Okay, so where should we put this? Um, well, I feel like we should put it inside the, um, inside the, maybe, maybe inside, just inside this loop here. So, just stick, um, yeah, just stick death test, test here. Okay, let's see if the, if dying here works. Yes, that works. And... Let's test lava. Hmm, okay, that doesn't seem like it's working. Um, 
Right, because we move us out of here first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stick this inside the change x by dx here because um, honestly that feels like a good place to put it because we're going to move in the x direction. So, um, okay, that's not working. Uh, let me figure this out. All right, I think I figured it out. Um, we can't put touching... We can't put this here because we can't put death test here because we're already pushed out of our our condition, right? We're already pushed out of this lava before we check if it's touching color. And of course, we're not touching the color if we're, you know, in the the, the lava, right? Um, and we're we already moved out of the lava, right? So what we're gonna do is actually we're gonna go ahead and stick this death test. Actually, first, this y equals y is less than negative sixteen hundred. We're gonna stick this where we, where it was before, underneath tick, right? This death test message, we're gonna we're gonna move it out from the dx. We're gonna move it into the dy. We're gonna put it inside position here, and we're also actually gonna duplicate this and stick this inside dx as well, so that we can test if we collided left and right with lava or if we collided up and down with lava. Okay, um. Uh, yes, okay, good. Um, so let's test this out. Let's uh, hop over. Actually, let's fall off the edge first. Yes, that that's all fine. Let's go ahead and jump into lava. Yes, okay, perfect, great. And what if we have sideways lava, which doesn't make much sense, but uh, let's say we have a bit of lava like this. Does this work? Let's see. Um, yes, okay, great. So that lava works. The normal lava works great. Okay, so that is probably all I need. All I want to leave you with this episode because we now we have a death system, so you can add, you can go crazy now. You can add spikes. You can do whatever you want with this. This is your project. Do whatever you want with it. Um, you can add spikes. You can add lava. You can add things that will kill you. Things like that. Do whatever you want. Go ahead. Um, I just want to leave you with one tiny fix. Uh, as you can see, our player is not very, um, not very sliding. It's not very, uh, realistic because there's no friction, right? So, I want to add a bit of friction. So, I'm going to create a new variable, dx. And again, this is, like, derivative stuff. This is, bas this is basically saying change in x. So, I'm going to create a new variable called dx for the sprite only. And let's keep it visible for now. Inside start game, we're going to set dx to 0. Let's stick this right here. It doesn't really matter where you put it. But we're going to stick. D we're going to put set dx to 0 at the beginning. Okay? And inside the... Inside tick, we're gonna, just going to go ahead and um, set dx to... And remember that trick from before? Uh, we're going to use it again. Minus. Grab a minus. Uh, key. Um, right arrow pressed. Minus key left arrow pressed. Set dx to key right arrow pressed minus key left arrow pressed. Um, actually, instead of that, I'm going to use a change. Change dx by key right arrow pressed minus key left arrow pressed. And stick that at the very top of the key tick block. But now this is not very helpful. So if let's say we put the dx into these these inputs here. Now, let's stick Stick it into the right arrow. Inside the left arrow, again, this is a negative, so we're going to have to multiply this by negative 1. So dx times negative 1, like this. Let's try to test this out. Ah, okay. We are going to need to, instead of this, sorry, uh, we're just going to put change x by dx underneath that. Get rid of all this. Do do that. Let's see. Yeah, okay. But as you can see, now we're really slippery. Whoa, you can't, you can't really control it, can you? Yeah. Yeah, it's, you, well, you can do this, but... It's kind of annoying, is it? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, something happened. Okay, that's kind of annoying. We don't want that. Okay, let's figure it out. Um, we kind of want the player to slow down from friction, right? So how do we f how do we add friction to this game? Well, it's pretty easy. All we have to do is set dx to grab a multiply and dx times and put a number between zero and one. Zero means not slippery at all don't let the player slide. One means ice, basically. Don't let the player slow down. So somewhere in between would be good. I'm going to pick 0 
Okay, so set dx to dx times 0 0.85, put that underneath the change dx by. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks much better. Okay, the player's kind of slow though, so uh, I'm going to change that to key right arrow pressed minus key left arrow pressed multiplied by, let's say, 2. And I can change that later. So, whoop, uh, <laughs> okay. There we go, let's see. Yeah, that's much better, okay. Yes, okay, that's good. That's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. Is collision still working? Let's see. Oh, okay. Mm. Well, collisions are still working, that's good. Death is still working, that's good. Um, does... Does lava death work? Let's see. Yeah, that works. How about sideways lava death? <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Let's see. Put that there. Yep, that's all still working great. Okay, so that's all I'm going to leave you with this episode. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope to see you in part 5 of how to make a scrolling platformer tutorial in Scratch. Not tutorial, sorry, game. How to make a scrolling platformer game in Scratch. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing this channel with others. It would really help me out a lot. Also, see you at howtodostuffwithethan.com. How to do stuff with Ethan.com. And see you next time. Bye.